I realized I'm not your typical biologist when myself and a group of friends decided to open up a biotech lab in a warehouse in Brooklyn, and then open the doors to the public and allow them to participate. We did this because throughout history, amateurs have been some of the leading contributors to science and technology. From Gregor Mendel, an amateur botanist who discovered the principles of genetics, to the Wright brothers who launched the aerospace industry from their bicycle workshop, today the same grassroots enthusiasm is being directed to biotechnology. People in self-constructed biotech labs are reading their own genomes, engineering microbes, and swapping gen genetic code between different species. Now, if you're hearing this for the first time, you might imagine some scary scenarios. <laughs> Fortunately, as a biologist, I know that the promise and reality of biotech is quite different. For at least 10,000 years, since the, since the dawn of agriculture. Humanity has been engineering crops through trial and error to produce foods. Our shared evolutionary history is what allows all of life to treat genetic code as modules that can be rearranged to produce novel functions. In the apt words of Rob Carlson, "Biology is technology." This powerful paradigm is what enables synthetic biologists to copy genes from medicinal plants and insert them into microbes. So instead of brewing beer. You can now brew life-saving drugs cheaply, or generate renewable biofuels for our vehicles, or produce polymers for our clothing so we can keep us warm. Amateur biologists are finding it easier than ever to use the tools of biotech. Equipment can be purchased cheaply on online auctions, such as this machine for copying DNA, which is in our lab. You can also now design unique genes on your laptop and send the information to a company, and they'll build it to your specs. And then mail you the DNA right back. Now, in contrast, beginning in 1988, the Human Genome Project took 13 years to complete. It was a monumental achievement, and had a budget of 2.7 billion dollars. Starting this year in 2012, an entire human genome can be sequenced in 24 hours for 1,000 dollars, and it's only getting faster and better. All of these developments have led to an explosion of participation in biotechnology. This is a competition that takes place at MIT, with teams participating around the world, congregating. They're all undergraduates. This overwhelming enthusiasm to invent and contribute still has a shortage of one other very important resource. It's very simple: space, where these new ideas can actually be tested. That's when a diverse group of individuals came together to start GenSpace. One of the world's first community biotech labs, a new type of space. It's a shared lab you can join and work on your brilliant idea safely and affordably. It's where members are programming new traits into plants and microbes that they'll light up your night, or growing objects using tissue culture, such as this wristwatch band, or they're designing cheaper methods for self-diagnostics, and they're setting off on expeditions in search of new species on the Alaskan tundra. And high up in the stratosphere. But if you're not yet a biologist, don't worry. It's also a space where you can come and learn these techniques. It's where our local high school teachers, from around the New York City area, train to keep abreast of biotechnology and then bring this information back into their own classrooms and students. And it's where we reach out to the biologists of the future. So I'm inviting all of you to bring your ideas over, embrace biotechnology, and unleash your inner biologist. Thank you. <laughs>